integrating and automating iPhone builder data. Uh, my name is Elahe and I'll be your host today. Um, Barrett will be leading today's webinar. And just as a reminder, um, I know many of you are iPhone builder certified, but we have a couple more sessions um, throughout the rest of this year. So if you have not done so yet, or if after today's webinar you, you know, learn a lot of great things and you want to learn more about them, um, the certification is going to be a great place for you guys to, to learn more about it. And with that, I'll turn it over to Barrett. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to join us for today's session on data integrations. I'm really excited uh, for the conversation that we're going to have today. And I look forward to learning more from you on what you're looking for for uh, integrations. And if this is your first time attending one of our webinars, uh, my name is Barrett Johannesson, and I've been with Xerion with Software for about uh, three years now, and I love the iPhone Builder platform and working with customers to uh, accelerate their workflows and uh, really make a make everyone's life a lot easier. And one of the, those ways is through the data integrations that we're going to talk about today. So one of the first things I always like to mention to people who are attending these webinars is that we have a lot of different support options available to you. And uh, with these, I'm not going to go into each one, but uh, with today's webinar, we're actually recording the session, and in the next 48 hours, we're going to send the recording to you, and that recording's go going to include a PDF of the presentation today, so you'll be able to access uh, all of these links that I have underlined here, and so you'll be able to see what those different support tools are. Um, but what's really nice is every webinar that we've had, we actually have a recording of, and you can access those recordings from our live webinars, uh, this link here. Uh, this brings you to our iformebuilder.com, and then resources, and then under webinars, you'll see all the upcoming webinars we have and the special topic recordings that have additional materials to them, as well as the training recordings. So if you really like today's session and you want to learn more about um, some of uh, how to build forms and uh, how to manage your projects a bit better, then I definitely suggest checking out some of our past recordings. Some other support that we have um, besides the certification that Ella Hay mentioned, uh, we do have some project services. So if you're looking for some assistance in building out uh, your forms or building your, your workflow, we're happy to assist you with that and just let us know. Um, we have a community forum, which right now uh, in a, the community forum is located in our customer success center. And right now within that community forum, we have a great discussion happening where we have our feature frenzy. And I hope you guys can go in there and vote for what feature you want added to the platform. Uh, but that is something that if you just click on the link here for our customer success center, then it'll bring you up to our the main page, which is just iformbuilder.zendesk.com. And I'll put that in our chat for today. So if you guys, uh, those of you who are new haven't visited it yet, I would suggest going there. Uh, besides having an agent in that corner, always willing and able to help you, uh, we've broken up our uh, Xerion topics into different sections here. But this is where I was just talking about our community forum where you're able to vote uh, for new features adding, and we're down to the final two. So definitely go ahead and make your vote uh, into our feature frenzy so uh, we can put in what you need. And just for today, I want to go through what we're going to discuss. So we have uh, just the getting started with integration, the need to know. So as you start to build out your projects, um, how to go about doing that successfully. Um, then we'll talk about the data feeds and the post URLs that you have access to. I'll share with you some integration ideas that we have and what we've seen other customers do. I'll talk through briefly uh, some of the custom web services uh, tools and resources that we have and where and why you would need to build out a custom web service. And then at the end, uh, one of my colleagues is going to come in and we'll go through how to accelerate workflows uh, with Xerion software. At any time, again, uh, please feel free to go into the question area and um, just tell Ella, hey, if I'm talking too fast or if I need to repeat any of it and if there are any questions on today's topics. So let's jump 
uh, jump in here and uh, let's talk about why you want to start integrating uh, your iForm Builder data. The first step or the first thought here is you want to eliminate human error. So if you're used to having people fill out forms on paper and then you have to take that paper form, type it into your computer, and you can't read some of the data that they put in there or uh, maybe some of those papers were lost, then that's that human error that automation eliminates completely. The second reason you want to start talking talking and thinking about integration is to automate your workflow. So when you find that you're constantly doing the same thing over and over again, maybe it's changing and manipulating some of the data, or if it's exporting a file and then posting it somewhere else, um, if you're constantly doing the same thing, then find a way to uh, make your life easier to automate your workflow and really make it so that you don't have to worry about downloading and then uploading or uh, updating option lists, whatever it may be, it's all automated in the back end. Once you've set up this integration, you'll find that it does save a lot of time and a lot of money. Number one, you don't have to have someone sitting at a computer typing in data from another form. Um, and so there's that person's salary is hopefully uh, you know, being used in separate ways, as well as um, you're eliminating error with that and the time that it takes to integrate that data. You have a faster, more comprehensive data processing. So you're able to view that data maybe in a dashboard and uh, see how that it actually appears and consume that data a lot faster uh, with this integration than if you were to have to download it and then manipulate it and then upload it to another system. So it's much, much faster. And most times it's in a um, real time dashboard. And the last one here is just to keep in mind that creative thinking wins ball games. And so you're able to uh, really customize your workflow with the different integration options that we have. And so start thinking, how do you really uh, enhance your workflow and customize it. So uh, the next topic here is just making sure everybody is on the same page with understanding iForm Builder data. What I've done for you here is I've listed out the different views and feeds that we have available within iForm Builder. But let's actually go into an iForm Builder account and see how it appears. So I've already logged into my training account. And this is where when the second you log into iForm Builder, you've probably noticed that every piece of data that you have access to will appear right away under the data tab. When you're looking at this, uh, we have our views listed right away. So this is where we have our list, our map, our graph, HTML, Excel, Excel flat, and scoring. Then we have this small little line that most people don't see, but we have feeds as well. So we have the XLS, XLS Plus, XML, JSON, RSS, Atom, and JSON scoring. So we do have views and feeds available for you. And depending on what you're looking to do will depend on if you're going to look at a view or a feed. Now, when it comes to integration, you'll definitely want to start looking at feeds uh, and start looking about how that data appears within a feed so that you understand iForm Builder data as a whole. So when you're integrating with other systems, you understand uh, how the the data uh, will appear and how you have to match up the two systems um, so that the data can flow seamless, seam, seamlessly. Excuse me. So uh, once in here, if we were to highlight a row of data that we have, then I, if I click the list view, this will immediately show me the four rows of data that have been captured for this particular form. If I wanted to get an export of the PDF, I can do one PDF at a time. I can highlight the row and then click the button that says view detail. And this is where I'm brought up to uh, the PDF button and able to download the PDF version of this record. So that's one of the views that uh, some people don't see right away. So I always like to point that out. But for today, we really want to focus on the difference between the views and the feeds so we understand what we're looking for and what we need to look at. So this is a download of one of our data views, the Excel data view. 
And you'll notice in the first area, we have the ID. Now that's the ID of the record. If we go across here at the very top, we see the labels that, that the user would actually see when they're completing the form on the device. Now it's important to, to know that when you have a view, this is going to be very similar to what the user sees. And it's the feed that actually changes and um, how, how the data appears is going to be more uh, like what you would see in a database versus what you saw on the device itself. What I also want to point out here in this view is at the very bottom, we have our parent form, which is in one table, and then every subform that's attached to that parent form would uh, be its own table. So when you're looking at the ID, this is now going to say S2. So this is saying this is subform that goes to the parent form that has the ID number two. So that's how you're able to connect uh, the two uh, tables together and you're able to see uh, what the relationship is between the parent form and the sub form. Now let's jump over to our feed. So at the very top already we see a huge difference. Uh, the first difference is from A all the way to M we have what we call metadata. With this metadata we're able to uh, see parent record ID, page ID, element ID. And then we also see created and modified for the date and who, the user that uh, last touched that form and the location. So whenever we see created in our metadata, that's saying the first time that that record was created. So that's why we have created there. So the first time it was started. Modified is the very last time. So if, for instance, I am... Uh, building out a custom web service and using the iForm Builder API, then I may actually create a record via the API. And so that's where I would, for the create location, it would say API instead of saying uh, exact coordinates of where that record was started. Same thing goes for if you're making any changes to that data then immediately after you make that change, any coordinates that maybe would have been captured by the user the last time they touched it in the modified location would then be lost and it would say server as the last modified location. And so that is uh, just important to keep in mind whenever it comes to editing any records on the database as well as when you are integrating. Uh, it's great to know that you actually already have a lot of this information in the back end of, of the system. So then if we move over here, we have uh, starting with N, you'll notice that we have a uh, we're using the data column names instead of the labels. So when you're building out a form, you always get to add a label, which is what the user sees, and then the data column name, which is what is used for the database. So when you're building your form, you can actually customize what, how these data column name appears. So uh, you may want to start thinking about that when you're building your forms and start thinking if there is certain names that certain questions should have for easier integration within your other database. The next piece here is let's jump over to the subform for this feed. You'll notice in the subform that we now have an ID and we have a parent record ID. So these both of the subform and the parent form actually have the same record ID in this instance. So that's how you're able to tell that they are related. So this parent record ID is, is referring back to the ID listed for our parent form under there. Now in a parent form, these three fields are always going to be blank because uh, th this is actually being populated in all the subforms based off of this record. The next uh, point that I want to share with you is if you're using um, if you're using our image widget and you're allowing the user to take pictures on their device, we now have it available for iOS and Android where you can actually see where the user was when they captured uh, that, that photo. So this is one way to double check if the user was actually on site or on location uh, when, they have, when they say that they are. So when you're able to, uh, when, once you've captured a record and you download that image to your, your, your device, your computer, you can then 
go and look at the details of that image and you'll be able to see the latitude and longitude for where uh, that image was taken. You're also able to see what kind of camera was used and the size of the file. So some of that can be really helpful, especially the latitude and longitude I found. Now, I've briefly gone through uh, the difference between the views and the feeds here on uh, our data tab. There's a couple other pieces that I want to mention to you. Uh, one is that we also have scoring available to you. Now, if you want to add scoring to your option list, that's done by going under the Forms tab and selecting Scoring. And once in here, you're able to choose uh, one of the forms that you have listed and click the Edit button. And then for each option list you have, you're able to add a weight and able to add a scored result. So if one of these results uh, options was the correct option, then if I put in the number one here, then that would mean every time that the user answers with this option selected, then they would get full credit for that response. Now, I just want to point that out for you because when we go under the data tab, once the scoring has been set up under the forms and scoring, then if you select a form that has scoring involved in it and you click the scoring button, I don't know if I actually have this here, what would end up happening is it would show you the result here. If you're doing any sort of inspection and all of the results are being captured within option list, then this scoring is a great asset to have. When it comes to integrating those scored results, that's where we have this JSON feed at the very end. So this will allow you to see if someone uh, passed or failed that inspection, what the base score is um, versus what they actually got. And you can have that integrate with any other system that you have. So if you are using another dashboard tool, you could actually use this JSON feed for that integration. Now, when it comes to the data, I also want to make sure that you're familiar with how to actually filter this data in case you find that you have forms with uh, a data set of over 100 different records. If you have over 100 different records in a parent form and each of the subforms have hundreds of records, you may find that you have a huge Excel file at that point that you're trying to export. And then you may receive this error message, uh, which is a 500 error message, which is a timeout. And so when the timeout occurs, you're actually not able to uh, download that file. So what we have available for you is a way to uh, filter your results by our record filter. And to do that, all we have to do is select uh, one of the forms that we have and then click the list button. Once in the list button, we, we see here all the different records but then we had this little coffee filter up next to the logout button. So if I click this coffee filter, I'm able to then add a, a filter for all the questions that I have. I can say only show me data from this past week. So if I did receive that timeout error, I can try to export uh, the data sets just through uh, different dates. I can also look and see, do I really need all of these fields in this export? So I can choose which ones uh, will appear and I can add conditions. So maybe I only want to see uh, data that has a certain person logged in. So I'm able to add a condition statement and then with that, uh, I'm, a filter will be created. So I'll just choose one um, for the date here. So you can see a little bit on how this works. So I'll go from December 1st until today. Sarah, while you're doing that too, we have a question on saving multiple filters and whether that's a possibility. Great question. So I've just set this filter and now it'll only show me the data that met that criteria for the date range. And if I were to go back to this data tab, I will see that under this filtered question mark, for the data set I just worked on, the coffee is filled in. So that's telling me that there is a filter in place. Now, unfortunately, the way that this is set up is that I can only have one filter in place at a time. So I just set up this 
uh, filter to be from a certain date range. I can't save this exact filter, um, but I can edit this and modify it and, and then see another filter after I've done that, but I'll only see one filter at a time. In just a moment, I'm going to show you how to do another type of filter, which is a stored filter. And that works a little bit differently. So just uh, hold on for right now on saving filters uh, in that sense. But in the filter I'm working on right now, I can only have one filter going at a time. If I need, awesome. oh, go ahead. I'll say thanks for answering that. Oh, sure. And for this, once this filter is done and I no longer want to have, have this filter in place, I do have to come back in here and click this clear button in the top corner underneath the logout button. So I'll then see all the data uh, for this record set again. What's really nice is that this filter will stay in place until I click that clear button. And so I'm able to just go, if I always have the same filter, then it'll be really easy um, just to go in there every single time. Now, as I mentioned, we also have stored filters. So with the stored filters, I have this button right here next to the views. I'm gonna select the same form. And once I hit the stored filters, I'm brought to a different page. Uh, this is where I can have multiple filters in place. And these filters are primarily used to, if you want to edit data uh, quickly and you have a lot of records that you wanna edit, but also when it comes to integration, if you want to copy the grammar you, that you used when you created this filter, that's a great asset to have so that you don't actually have to code it yourself. So when it comes to uh, the integration side and you're wanting to build filters, this is the way to go. If I were to just uh, go into one of the filters I've already created and click the edit filter button, I'll see all the fields that I have within this particular form. I've also added a rule. So with the number widget, I have to have it so that it's greater or equal to the number one uh, for this data set. And I have subforms attached to it and I'm able to add a filter to these subforms. So that's another thing that was different from the record filters that I showed you just moments ago. Once this filter has been created, and and or edit it depending on what you're doing. Um, if I wanted or needed to go in and edit some of that uh, data that was captured in that table, I can highlight that row and click the table edit view button. And this will bring up all the data that met the criteria that I put forth. And I can actually add uh, information to this table edit. And this is going to make an edit to the data set in real time. And so uh, just keep that in mind. I don't have to press any extra buttons. It's already added and edited. So this is, again, a great way to uh, come in and make changes on um, multiple changes really quickly. And you can actually have this ascending or descending, and you can search for specific values. If you want the size to be larger and the style of the text to change, you can change that in this table as well. Hopefully you see uh, the big differences between the two now and when you'd want to use each one. Sure, we do have one, um, and if you want to answer it later, you can too, about how to see the details and coordinates behind a photo that may be taken. Sure, so it all depends on um, if you're actually downloading that file. If you have downloaded that file to your computer, it's just right-clicking and seeing the view details, and it'll tell you exactly uh, where it was captured, but if you're just using a URL, like the one that we give you in iForm Builder, you can actually um, use this tool that we have in this link here, and that will allow you to put in your image and it'll give you the metadata for that image uh, using this tool. Now, uh, let's move forward a little bit and talk about our data integration considerations. Uh, the first thing that you wanna start thinking about is how do you want the data to appear? Now, as I showed you between the difference between a view and a feed is we have labels and we have data column names. And with option lists, we also have key values, index, index values, and the labels that you see for those option lists. So you have to think about uh, how, how you want that for the tool that you're integrating with. You also want to think about when you have to add new questions to your form. 
um, you'll have to keep in mind that any update you make to your form, you may also have to update to the other table that you're integrating with if you plan on passing that data into that other source. Then uh, the last tip to start uh, thinking about is how do you want the data to flow? Do you want data to come into iForm Builder or do you want data to go out of iForm Builder? Or do you want it to flow bi-directional? Uh, once you start thinking about this and thinking about automating your workflow, it will change how your setup um, works and how you decide to have those integrations created. So I next want to talk about uh, using iForm Builder Post for integration. This is the first step I suggest to people uh, to start looking into when it comes to integrating with other tools and other web services. So if you're unfamiliar with the post URL, if we log into your iForm, iForm Builder account and you've gone under Forms, Form Assignment, and you select a form, at the very bottom, underneath the email alert, you'll see where you have a post data section. And this is where you're able to add a URL. And you'll notice I have one already linked in here. Now, these URLs are going to um, be connected. This one's connected to a tool that we have here in iForm Builder or here at Xerion Software. But other tools I'll go through in a second. They could be other dashboarding tools, reporting tools. There could be other uh, PDF generators and other mapping tools, whatever it may be, you're able to get URLs from them and use them as endpoints here. So if I were to go and edit this endpoint, you could see what it looks like. I'm able to give it its own name and paste in an endpoint URL. And this URL is coming from that other web service that I, I've connected to. I'm able to choose the post data format. So for this one, I have JSON, but I could have also chosen XML. I can choose the content type. Most often, it is going to be the native application. And then beneath that, we have the option to use the label. So one of the criteria that I just mentioned that you should start thinking about is if you want the labels to be used for the data or if you want the data column names. And if you want the labels, then you'll want to come in here and make sure that that's checked off for this endpoint. Then we just have the error email um, address that you want if any time the post isn't able to uh, successfully post to that other web service, how should you be notified? And here it's just my uh, email addresses. So I would get notified right away if this isn't able to connect to this endpoint. And once you've added this endpoint, then every time a record is submitted for this particular form, it'll automatically go to this other web service. So I only have one endpoint listed here, but I could have as many as I needed. So I could have one go to a reporting dashboard. I could have one go to a PDF generator. I could have one go to a CRM tool. There's lots of options here. And uh, the flexibility of adding these is really quite easy. And um, it's just learning about what the other web services that you're connecting with are and how they are set up and configured. What I've done for you here is I've just mapped out uh, what each section looks like for this post URL and what um, I've given you the definitions for what they actually stand for and what they mean. Here's some examples of some that I've used. So I've connected with Google for some of these, Zapier, and another one where I've connected to WebMerge. So this is where I want to bring up some integration ideas that our uh, team here have used as well as some of the customers have used. For this, we have Clipfolio, which is a dashboard tool, WebMerge, which is a PDF generator. And um, I'll show you an example of what WebMerge can do in just a minute. We have Zapier and Zoho, ArcGIS and Tableau, just to name a few. But we have a lot of other integration ideas, and I have the link listed below. So for the Google integrations, one perk of using this is that it is free. Um, we do have some documentation in our Customer Success Center on how to do this. Some workflows that have uh, been really successful have been taking iForm Builder data and automatically having it go into a Google spreadsheet so that uh, if someone who's not an iForm Builder user uh, wants to view that data in real time, they have access to it via Google. Another thing that um, some groups have been successful in doing is using iForm Builder records and have mapped it to build a custom Google Doc or PDF, and they've actually configured it to have an email uh, connected to it. So you're able to uh, 
uh, really customize how that appears and um, having that trigger to the automatic email. This is just a quick example of what it looks like uh, for that custom PDF. So I have mapped out um, just with the store name how it would appear on the setup. You're able, in the Google Doc itself, you're able to bring in your own logos and just uh, set up the different tables as you see fit. But then in between these parentheses are actually using the data column names uh, from the form itself. So when we looked at that feed, we saw those data column names and that's what we're seeing here. You're able to go in and set up some of these configurations through the script editor in Google. Again, in this slide, I have some great examples on how to do that. So if that is something that you're interested in, uh, be sure to check out these links and um, ask our team any questions that you may have. Another tool that I think is fantastic and I use all the time is Zapier. So Zapier has over 500 different web apps and iForm Builder is one of them. And what you're able to do is you're able to set up actions and triggers uh, to connect with other web tools and web services. You can also connect iForm Builder to iForm Builder. So for instance, uh, every time you have someone new who's joining your uh, the data collection side of your iForm Builder project, and you don't want to go into iformbuilder.com to create that user, you can actually create a form. And when you fill out that form, you can have it connected to Zapier so that uh, based off the information that you put in that form you've completed, you can then create a user. So it's really, it really is a, a time-saving tool and service um, that is available. And they do have a free version. So I, if you're interested in looking into Zapier, I would definitely suggest testing that out. Just to give you some ideas on uh, what it can do with iForm Builder, there's the triggers and actions. Uh, the triggers, you could have it set up to add a new user, um, to a trigger for a new form, a new company profile, or even create brand new records. Uh, and um, then you can update those record assignments once they've been created. So if you're a non-developer and you're looking for a way to start automating your platform or automating your workflow today, I definitely suggest checking out Zapier for um, that integration. As I mentioned earlier, I did want to show you the difference um, with web merge reports as well as with what you get currently within iForm Builder. So on the left-hand side, just a quick version of what our PDF would look like. And then on the right-hand side is what the web merge can actually generate and uh, automate those, those workflows. And that uses that post URL under the form assignment section. If you are someone who's interested in integrating with Esri, uh, we do have a lot of, or a good amount of documentation on it, but uh, to keep in mind that we have iForm Builder can, connect to ArcGIS online, but it can also connect uh, via the iOS devices. It can connect through uh, Esri apps. So that's where we have the connection between Esri collector app. So you can select a point from Esri uh, in the collector app and then launch a record in iForm and pass data from that app into I, the iForm record that the user is then in. Once the user syncs that device, they the point can then be updated on an ArcGIS online map, and uh, they can see that all in real time. So it's a great configuration that you can set up if that is something that you're interested in. And the last thing I wanted us to talk about today, all well, the second to last, um, is our custom web services. So before I jump into this, I do have another poll. And Elahe, while I'm launching this, are there any questions coming in? There aren't right now. You must be doing a really good job today, or maybe we just have a, quiet, to sleep. a quiet bunch. Who knows? <laughs> so uh, with this, I just put up a quick poll. Um, the first question is: Do you plan on using the iForm Builder API? Um, the first response would be yes, and I feel confident in my skills to use the API. Second is no. What is API? And the third is maybe I'll need to look into it more. All right, so about 63% of you have voted. So I guess some of those folks maybe have fallen asleep and we'll just have to wake them up. 
Okay, so from the looks of it, um, only a small percentage of you feel that you, you can use the iForm Builder API and you have that confidence. About 15% aren't quite sure what API is and about 75% will just want a little bit more information on what it is before they decide uh, if they'll be able to use it or not. So thank you to those who've been able to uh, respond to that question. I'm gonna go ahead and close the poll. So for those of you who aren't quite sure and they just wanna learn a little bit more about it, then here we go. Uh, so what is a custom web service? So this is where you're able to build that bi-directional uh, workflow via the iForm Builder API. So it does use a RESTful API and our API is built for developers. So if you're not a developer, uh, but you have one in-house, then I definitely suggest sending them along some of the information that we have so that um, they can get started if you wanna start looking into this. Um, the, the custom web service using the API is really if there is a custom configuration that you need for your workflow. And I do suggest trying to see if Zapier fits your needs first, as well as the post URL. Uh, but if it doesn't, then the API is a great way to go. Uh, the, the second thing to start thinking, thinking about is why would you need or want to develop a custom web service? The first point is if you want to integrate data from multiple sources, this is one way to do it. The second is to redefine your workflow. And the third is that it'll give you full task automation, uh, i.e. you'll be able to update option lists in real time, uh, the user tables, but also what I really like is that um, some folks never even log into their iForm Builder account anymore because they've updated and created full task automation. Everything is sent to where it's supposed to go and they don't have to worry about um, adding new users or editing any of these option lists because it's all automated. If you're looking to build a custom web service, these are the different links that I do suggest that you go and check out uh, within our Customer Success Center. And so once you receive these, this PDF, feel free to click on these and give them access to your development team. All right, so on that note, I wanna start talking about how to accelerate workflows with Xerion software. So, so far in today's session, we've focused on iForm Builder and iForm Builder data and the iForm Builder API. But what I wanna talk about now is really with Xerion software. For those of you who aren't aware, uh, iForm Builder is a product of Xerion software. And what we've done is we've actually been able to create a workflow automation uh, with other tools and other pieces connecting all under the Xerion software umbrella. I'm gonna start by just asking you a couple questions and then after that, I'm gonna hand it over to my colleague, Ben, and he's going to show you uh, what can be done uh, with the Xerion software. So uh, the first question is, are you looking for a way to automate your process too? Uh, number one, are you trying to find a way to secure your data uh, and, a, and store it all in one location. So if you have data coming from multiple web tools and uh, multiple data collection tools and you want it all in one place, then um, keep listening. The second is um, if you're looking for a way to update option lists based off the user's responses in a forms automatically instead of, again, having to go in and do that yourself. If you wanna trigger a custom email only when a user responds in a certain way. If you want to generate a custom PDF report, if you're looking to uh, view report data in a dashboard in real time, if you want to transform your data to match other uh, database structures and don't want to manually do that every time, if you want to flatten your iForm Builder parent form data and subform data into one file, also, if you want to aggregate multiple record sets into one so that you can summarize that data. If you have different actions that you want to occur based off the, of the data that you received from your users, then this is where workflow acceleration with Xerion software really comes in handy. And Ben, I'll hand it over to you. All right. Thanks a lot, Barrett. Um, so hope everyone's doing well. Um, just wanted to walk through just a, a couple scenarios here. I got a couple slides and then I'll go into kind of a, a hands-on demo here. So um, in this in this exact scenario, um, it's a, a retail audit that I'm going to go through, but it encompasses um, all of these these main bullet points you see on the screen. 
Um, so first, starting with with form building and, and mobile data collection. So first, build out your form, uh, get that form ready on a mobile device for folks to to utilize and capture data. Now, once you capture and store that data, then we're going to pass it to the data flow automation. We're able to kind of shape and transform and, and aggregate your data, as Barrett was saying earlier. Once your data is ready to go, then we're going to send it over to the reporting software to be able to basically have custom views, whether that be tables, charts, graphs, whatever it may be, um, along the way. And all that's kind of wrapped under uh, the, the, the blanket of secure storage. So just want to move on here um, and just go over the, the data flow automation piece. So on the right-hand side of the screen, you're going to see um, an example Gnosis data flow. So from the little uh, green webhook you'll see there, data flows in and it, it goes through a series of, of record sets and, and writes to a, a couple SQL servers and sends out an email. So that's just an example data flow. Now, the one I'm going to show is, is a bit more simple than that. Um, but really, the, the keys within Gnosis are once you get that data, what do you want to do with it? Um, so do you want to transform it or filter it and say everything that's male data goes here and everything that's female goes here? Or do you want to count how many hours um, each individual worked and, and do some aggregation on that. Um, additionally, we have many, many actions that you can do, such as writing to email, sending it to dashboards, writing it to different databases, um, writing back to iForm Builder. Um, so these are more actions and, and there's more to come for sure. So um, a lot of folks kind of leave out the middle piece of data flow automation because it's it's more behind the scenes, but it's it's very crucial in, in the three-step process and in making sure you can have a, a full end-to-end -end solution from capture that data to reporting you need something to, to shape your data in the middle. So that's kind of where data flow automation comes in. Um, and then moving on to the last one here is, is custom reports. And, and this is kind of where um, you kind of get the oohs and ahs of, of these pretty looking reports with, with your data. So um, once you get your data refined to a point that you're ready to, to work with it, um, inside the reporting software, you can easily drag and drop and, and you're able to basically build these custom reports and say, what's the percentage of, of males versus females taking this survey? Or uh, what's the average product price over over the last three, three to five years or anything like that. Um, as well, making these dashboards publicly accessible. So you can go to a URL or, or just view it when you open up your mobile device and see um, any quick KPIs or, or quick high level metrics to see that there. Um, so that's kind of what the reporting software involves. So I'm gonna just turn it over um, to my device here and uh, we'll just kind of show a, a quick overview of that. So um, just while I'm getting my device up, I'm just gonna kind of walk through this scenario. So this is uh, gonna be a retail audit so we're going to think we're going to walk into a couple stores and, and look at all of their different products that they may have. Um, and then we're going to basically capture the price and a couple other details about them. Are they in a, a prime location? Um, anything along those lines. So let's open up the form here. Um, it's a, a three level down form. So we have our, our parent form, which is basically um, what region are you going to? So I'm going to say I'm going to region two. Um, what is the, the date of this audit? Uh, who is the auditor? So you're going to enter your name or we'll choose it from a drop down list. And then we're going to jump into our sub form here. We're going to be able to essentially um, view each store that we're going to. So we're going to walk to the first store and we're going to say it's uh, store four and capture its location quickly. And we want to capture one to many products about this, this store. So in this scenario, let's say we're, um, we're going to look at all the, the car oil and get the price of each of these. So what product is it? It's going to be product one. And uh, the retail price per, per quart will be $3.54. And the mechanic price, they get it a little cheaper, will be $2.50. Um, again, what is the location of this product? So when you walk in the store, is it in the middle of the aisle? Is it on the bottom shelf? Is it at the back of the store? Um, it, we'll say it's at a location. It's at the, the, uh, the middle of the shelf. Um, is it promoted? Is there a, a special for it? Um, if there is, what is the promoted price? Well, maybe we'll say it's instead of $3.56, it's, it's $3 even. And then again, you want to go go take a quick photograph of of, uh, of this product. So I'm just going to take a picture here of, of outside. So that's one single product that we're capturing within this single store. So I'm going to hit done and just capture one more product uh, for, for time's sake here. So we'll say this is going to be a product three. Our retail price will be $7. This will be an expensive quart of oil. Mechanic price is five, and the location is a D location, and it is not promoted. Let's take one more photograph. So again, you see we have a, a fairly complex form spanning from what, what region are we in, uh, what store are we in, and then what products within that store. 
So you can capture, I mean, throughout the day, you might go to five or, or 10 different stores and, and all of this information. So once you capture it, um, we're going to hit done. And it's actually going to submit this data up and it's going to be stored on the iPhone Builder Cloud. Um, at, which, at which point it's going to be sent over to our, our data flow automation tool. So we're going to hop over here into our internet browser and we're going to go go hop into uh, actually Gnosis here quickly just to show the, the middle piece. So I'm going to load open my data flow just so you can see exactly what is, is happening with this data that I submitted. So there's a webhook here that we have that's going to accept the post from iPhone Builder as Barry showed earlier. Then we're going to store this data um, inside of our first record set. This is going to be our parent, our subform, and our, our sub subform. And then from there, we're actually going to perform one of the transformation functions, which is flattening. It's basically going to put all the data on one level. And once we do that, then we're going to write it directly into our Zerian reports. From there, we're able to, to then report on it. So again, very simple example, more simple than I showed before. Data comes in, it's flattened, and then it's, it's sent out. And it's also stored in here in case you want to, to mas massage it anymore. So let's move over into the reporting side of things. And I'm just going to refresh the screen here. We might see some, some information uh, update. What you're going to see here is essentially a dashboard that I've, I've designed from this information. So you'll see at the top we have a bunch of different filters. I want to select by region and see that if I only want to see, uh, see region 1's information, it's going to filter that information to show only region 1. Um, additionally, you're going to see a couple other metrics here. What is the mechanic price, average mechanic price for each of these products at, at which location? What is the retail price for each of these products? Um, down here, we have just a, a very simple pie chart of which products are promoted. Well, um, most of them are not promoted and 40% are, are promoted. If they are promoted, what are their prices here? Um, additionally, going down, um, what, what type of location are they? Are they at the front of the store? Or are they in the back of the store? Um, so again, you're going to be able to see all this information. And then down here, if you want just a very simple um, tabular view of your information, you're going to be able to see that here. So what region, the date, um, what the prices were, even the photographs of the, the, um, the picture you took are in here as well. So again, this is just a quick example of the report. You're going to see that there's there's many filters and, and things on top of this that you can can work with if I only want to see, uh, see store one's information. Um, again, so this is all going to be live and updating and um, basically you can share this with anyone else to access or we can have it secure for folks to, uh, to log in and only see certain, certain parts of this. Um, so again, this is kind of what the uh, the Zerian reports looks like in a, a full end-to-end, -end, starting with let's capture data on the forms, like even doing with iPhone Builder, send it through the, the data flow automation, and then write it into the reporting software to be easily able to drag and drop and, and build any custom reports you wish. So then just going back to, to what we've talked about today, hopefully after today's session, uh, you feel a little bit more comfortable on what iPhone Builder data looks like, the difference between the views and the feeds, um, you have some ideas just on a high level on how to start integrating iPhone Builder data with other systems so that you can uh, save time and money and save headaches and human error. Uh, hopefully the demo that Ben just gave you with the Xerion software with an end-to-end -end solution on your workflow um, is helpful for you to see. And um, just as we close here, I want to thank you guys for uh, taking the time out of your schedule in the next 48 hours you will receive an email from uh, us with the recording of today's session as well as the pdf if at any time there's anything we can do for you please let us know and if there are any other questions we are happy to answer them but thank you very much for your time today and have a great rest of your day